Welcome back to the nonprofit show. You know, Julia, I've been catching myself. I say welcome back because I'm making a huge assumption that many of our viewers and listeners have been here before. But if you haven't, we welcome you also for your very first time. Today we have with us Daniel Grunstein joining us all the way from Miami. He is the co-founder and the CEO at Crowded. He's brought to us a conversation that I think you're going to like digital payment decisions. And we're diving deep in particular about Venmo and your nonprofit. So stay with us, Daniel, we'll do a quick intro here just uh, briefly, but before we pass the microphone, we wanna <laughs> share who we are if we have not met you yet. So hello to you, Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy and mastermind truly behind the nonprofit show. Uh -oh. I get to I get to play alongside day in and day out as a co-host. So honored to do that. Uh, I'm Jarrett Ransom, nonprofit nerd and CEO of The Raven Group. We also want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to our amazing partners that allow us to have these conversations like the one we're about to have with Daniel. So thank you to our friends over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, your part-time controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University. Also, thank you to JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Do us a favor, do yourself a favor, do your, uh, the companies a favor, check them out because they have helped us to produce over 950 episodes. And here's where you can find them. Pull out your smartphone. We know it's with you. You're probably on it while you're listening to us. Um, <laughs> Scan the QR, download the app. You can also find us on broadcast and podcast platforms. So uh, a lot, a lot of opportunities to binge watch us, which we shared yesterday. There was a, a guest, in fact, Julia, that was on with us before the holidays, before December. And he says, you know what? I found myself binge watching the nonprofit show over holiday break. So I love it. <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry, I but know. hey, we're excited to have you here with us, Daniel. So Daniel Grunstein, for everyone watching and listening, he is the co-founder and the CEO at Crowded. You can check out his company at bankingcrowded.com. Welcome to you, Daniel. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Okay. Let us know, and I told you this in the green room, what's the elevator speech when it comes to Crowded? Like, what all are you doing in the great state of Florida? Yeah, uh, we're doing it for everyone uh, okay. across the U.S. Essentially, uh, we help um, nonprofit treasurers manage their finance. So nonprofit treasurers have to deal with quite a wide array of financial processes for what is typically a volunteer position and often a position where you know someone might have a little bit of financial training, but but not not a tremendous amount. They have to collect payments. They have to bank those. They have to, you know, allocate spending and budgets. They have to complete very specific um, tax filings at the end of the year, ensure that they're in good standing with state and federal and IRS uh, bodies. And for, you know, a lot of nonprofit uh, treasurers, this is, you know, seeming like a completely endless task. Um, <laughs> but they spend a lot of money on administration and consulting and things like that when, you know, we realized that this could be put into a neat um, user friendly uh, digital experience and really just make it a lot easier for um, grassroots nonprofits. Uh, and we also work with national organizations and larger organizations to provide this resource uh, to um, their uh, local treasurers in their local chapters. So that's um, quite a large portion of our business. Amazing, amazing. Well, today we're going to talk about digital payments and and we really want to talk specifically about venmo um and i think this is going to be one of those conversations that people are like oh man i need to know about this or i don't know about this start with us in, in talking about venmo what it is and how it works with nonprofits, and then we'll dig in a little bit deeper about getting your thoughts and your opinions on it for sure so Venmo is a, what they call a peer-to-peer -peer payment solution. It's designed for, you know, if, if we went out for lunch and, you know, I paid, 
and you know julia and and, and jared you you just paid me back your, your share for lunch and it's okay awesome. no we're not going to do that you're taking us out to lunch <laughs> okay i'll take you out to lunch <laughs> Yeah, so, I, but if we were, but, yes. but, <laughs> just say. I, it's hypothetical. Obviously, I, I I would take you out to lunch. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. um, so it's designed uh, in in that way that it's meant to be between individuals, very casual expenses, nothing that needs to be reported or tracked, and and it's all done and good. Uh, and so I think some people are not sort of aware of what Venmo is great for, and it is excellent for that lunch use case, um, but it's probably not the best thing. Um, uh, to run a nonprofit on, um, and you can sort of run into a lot of um, challenges and and problems, fines even, um, which we can get into in sort of subsequent questions. But at a high level, that's sort of um, what Venmo is and how it sort of has become used and misused over the years. Yeah, I gotta say, Daniel, when I first heard of Venmo, and and you said five six, I don't even know when it was established, but you know, I thought, no, not another platform. Like I don't want another login. I don't want another password. I don't want another system that I have to connect to my bank account. And Mm -hmm. then that's the personal side. Right. And then it became nonprofits are using it. There's donations being sent through that there's income, maybe, you know, an earned revenue or merchandise, things like that. So let's get, as I say, nerdy, let's get super nerdy about this. Talk to us about like, how it works in particular with the nonprofits and the accounting considerations that we need to be aware of. Cause you shared mm-hmm. earlier, yeah. like the nonprofit treasurers, all I heard was a lot of I's to dot and a lot of T's to cross. <laughs> so, so essentially um, on Venmo, you know, you, you, Previously, we're allowed to collect sort of as much as you want. And Venmo sort of said, it's, you know, whatever problems you run into down the road, that's between you and the IRS or you between uh, you and, and you. And now Venmo's become sort of a bit more of the strict parent. Um, and so, <laughs> for example, uh, in, in 2023, that their first restriction, which is if you collected over $20,000 or 200 uh, plus transactions, then you needed to do a, a 1099. Um, mm-hmm. on Venmo, and now in 2024, it's it gone to five thousand dollars, and in 2025, it's going to go to six hundred dollars. Oh my gosh, I had no idea about this. I didn't either. Yeah, so it's okay if you're doing you know seven hundred dollars in lunch payments, um, but if you're doing six hundred dollars for an income stream that's obviously not money in, money out, that's like donations or dues or something like that then you have to do a 1099 and prescribe that to a nonprofit. So what previously has been happening is, you know, the mom or dad running the bake sale or the popcorn stand, a boy dad. scout, puppy, yeah. is just saying, oh, yeah, Venmo, Greg, he's he's the dad in charge today. Um, and then, you know, he wa- he figures out how to get that to the nonprofit. Um, but that's obviously not going to be sort of possible um, going forward. Um, and in addition, you also have the just the issue of security. I mean, the fact that is that if you are processing these large amounts, there's no FDIC insurance on the amount in that. It's not a proper bank account. It just it just sits there. Um, there have been a lot. There have and and and, and will continue to be uh, instances of fraud on Venmo. Um, and the, and finally, you know, it is under an individual's name. So you know, we hope that everyone who's involved in nonprofit is of goodwill and is honest and everything, but. We know that that's not always the case, and it's just always better for things to be under the nonprofit's name, um, which you know, which isn't really possible with them. So, okay. Okay. no opportunity to wow. have, like, let's say, uh, the nonprofit account, right? Like, like I think PayPal has that option. Is that correct? Like a business account. PayPal and Venmo both have business accounts, but they're incredibly expensive. So it's like three percent or more transactions. Um, yeah, because because you're because you're a business now. Venmo has launched Venmo for charities, which is a different charity profile. But you're limited um, in what you can manage because you're only allowed like one user. So like you can't like have it on the same phone and then have two Venmo profiles. You'd have to like create another phone number or email and have it on a, another device. Um, and also you have to be a 501c3 and we all know that there's many other types of 501c social clubs uh, fraternities sports teams memberships and associations yeah, associations yeah professional societies yeah. 
everything else, uh, educational institutions um, that are not 501c3s. So that, that, that does limit it. Um, they're trying to do their best, but at the end of the day, it is a peer-to-peer -peer payment platform and, and that's what it's made for. And it's sort of like, you know, you can only uh, you can only change it so much um, without making it complicated. The beauty of it is how easy it is, and oh, so um, so yeah, that that's really where it's at today. You know, Daniel, I first downloaded Venmo um, because of the Girl Scouts. They were standing in front of my uh, local supermarket selling their cookies, and I said, um, "Oh gosh, let me go in and I'll because I don't have any cash." I'll, you know, get cash back from my transaction. And uh, a dad was there, which generally you don't see dads work in the booths. It's usually the moms. And he said, oh, not a problem. I can do Venmo. We can do Venmo. And I was like, well, okay. So he's like, hey, do you have it? And I said, no. And he said, well, I'll show you how to install it, blah, blah, blah on your phone. And I said, now, how does this work? Because I noticed it went to his, it was his name. And he said, well, he said, I just bought all the cookies outright. And then I'm having my girls sell them and we're, and I'm just, I'll, you know, come back, I'll come ahead. You know, I won't come ahead, but I'll, I'll be even with, with the transaction thing. And so I was like, wow. Okay. I didn't think about it. Bought my cookies, said, yay team. Good job. You know, and then went on my way. Now that I hear you describing this process. Mm -hmm. Wow. I see so many issues with it that, um, it's shocking, but I maintain to this day, if that family hadn't done that, they wouldn't have sold as many cookies as quickly as they did. Right. Yeah. And that's why, you know, Girl Scouts are looking for alternative solutions. It's not like they can go, they can ignore the digital payments sort of trend. They need to have something compliant yeah. that is in the organization's name. Um, uh, but, but on the other hand, they can't be using these peer-to-peer -peer apps. So that's sort of the... Um, educational battle we're fighting as well as trying to be a business um, uh, is to just people to understand the difference um, and then you know there's there's you know several ways you can build a solution out there um, yeah. amazing so what about the risk associated with this and I can only imagine there's several of them um, and we really pride ourselves <laughs> to think that we are such a benevolent sector yet we know <laughs> that you know something something can happen there's bad apples everywhere so what are the risks to nonprofits as well as daniel the donors that might be participating in this platform yeah i would say donors have in a way the most to lose because essentially if you are venmoing all your donations to an individual i mean i'm sure that dad in in, in your example julia was you know an honest dad that did exactly what he said. And I'm sure 999 times out of a thousand they are. But yeah. that one thousand, that's your hard earned, you know, going to waste. Um, and essentially once it's in an individual's name, they can do what they want with it. Like there's no, you know, nothing forcing them or nothing obliging them to to be honest and trustworthy. I'm sure most people are, but I think people want that added uh, sense of security, particularly when donating because they're doing something that's, you know, out of the goodness of their heart. Um, and then for the organizations, I mean, there's two risks. One is operational. Uh, you know, say you have in, in a troop, um, you know, different stands or in a council, you know, several moms or several dads going out and collecting, ensuring that the right amount comes from each individual Venmo account back to the, the bank account or, or whatever at the end. So that's just a headache and, and annoying. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and, and there's risks that things can, when you have cumbersome processes, there's risks that, you know, numbers can fall between the cracks. Um, and then there's obviously the compliance risk, which is just yeah. that, you know, the dad can get hit with a tax bill because he collected $30,000 in cookie sales and the IRS says, oh, what's this income? Um, and then the girl who is forced with this awkward situation, do we help the dad out or do we not? Um, and we've seen that a bunch. We've seen that in the Girl Scout sector. We've definitely seen it in fraternities on campus where they are even, you know, less attuned to some of this stuff because they've never paid taxes before. Um, and and they're suddenly like, what is the IRS? And uh, we are like, uh, well, welcome to college. <laughs> the college yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, Daniel, technically, um, and again, I'm not an accountant, but technically, that dad that I made that 
purchase to. Um, that was not a trackable um, donation because he's, I didn't spend my oh. money with the 501c3. Right. And so yeah. technically, if I were to record that as a donation, it wouldn't count. Yeah, you would not be able to to get tax reimbursement on that yeah. donation. But he does, right? The dad could get, let's say he bought $20,000 worth of cookies, which I can't imagine. And Ooh. I would like to know what, what kind of cookies you bought, Julie. But that Thin might be mints. a conversation. <laughs> Thin mints. <laughs> You know, like, like it really does kind of bring in some opportunities of, I don't know, it's just, it's just chaos back to that headache that you mentioned, Daniel, like it sounds like a migraine from hell. <laughs> really? So not even with donations, but when you're trying to collect dues, so track payments or everyone needs to pay a hundred dollars for an event or a trip that you're going on, let's say. Mm -hmm. And you need to send out requests to everyone and then and need a way to track who's paid and who hasn't. And that's where it becomes like just not, it's 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 almost too simplified Venmo. It needs that one notch of sophistication just to tell me who's paid and who hasn't and to be able to track it. Um, and then the other thing is that is a, a great um, reason why a lot of people don't want to do move to a compliance solution is they have their own little, uh, let's say, uh, questionably legal scheme going on obviously they're being honest and all the money does go to the nonprofit. but you know for example in that case the dad can make it get a tax deductible receipt for twenty thousand dollars no problem no one's gonna ask questions about that um even with expenses we see a lot of that so people are like oh no i want to keep using my card because i put all the you know fraternity expenses on my card and i get frequent you know miles and mm -hmm. i get all this cash back and all this stuff i'm like yeah but that's not yours <laughs> like and and so people have these these things going on that, you know, seem sure. okay, but they're not really. They're not really. I have to ask about the donor side. Um, I've spent a lot of time in fundraising and I love capturing donor data. So yeah. does Venmo allow us to capture besides the name and probably a phone number, possibly an email, like any other donor data? Because I can't imagine yeah. similar to Facebook donating, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, we're missing so many of these data points. Yeah, so it doesn't really integrate with anything. Um, so you'd have to be copying that manually or exporting it to your contacts on your phone and then every month sort of updating that back into your CRM. Um, I doubt anyone does that. Um, and if they do, then good on them. But um, your life should be a lot easier than that. Um, and you know, you probably need to find some other hobby. Um, uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that would be the only way that, that you could do that. Um, you need something that's particularly like for the nonprofit that's like, you know, able to integrate within whatever, um, CRM you're using, um, or, um, donor management, so uh, maps, ma management software you're using, um, to collect those payments, which Venmo doesn't really do. Mm -hmm. So share with us what some of those options might be. So we're, I'm learning, I'll speak for myself. I'm learning Venmo is probably not the best option for nonprofits mm -hmm. uh, for all of the reasons that have been said here. What are the better solutions, especially Daniel, for the smaller organizations that maybe are still within, you know, three years of, of kind of like historical, you know, existence? Um, or, and, or a smaller operating budget. Yeah. What are the solutions we should be looking at? So the smaller the operating budget, the more you need an end-to-end -end solution because otherwise you're going to be left with like lots of fragmented um, systems. You're going to have maybe several ways that you collect money. Say, you know, you are doing Venmo using PayPal, using some other processing software, mm -hmm. cash, like you can't keep track of all those. So having one, like way to collect money is much easier. You're going to need a bank account. Um, so you, you want to ideally find a place that you can collect the money and bank the money in the same place. And then you also need to spend the money. So, you know, you need to be able to get several cards for people and things like that. Um, there are various solutions, but 
the unique thing about crowd is we're made for the not-profit. So there's lots of digital banks for businesses. And obviously, um, given that, you know, non-profits have an EIN and they are, you know, a type of business, they can use those solutions, but they can't help them with some of the, uh, you know, more non-profit specific things like a IRS 990 form at the end of the year that you have to file, which is your tax return. Um, or gaining and retaining tax exempt status, which which we do. Um, so it's best to the smaller you are, take the more you need um, something that's really tailored to your use case. And then again, if you're a big nonprofit, a very large nonprofit with lots of chapters, you fall into the same problem because you're made up of lots of small mm-hmm. local chapters, and it becomes your headache at the top. Of uh, I've got a treasurer calling me every day. They don't know what this form is, that form is. They've lost money here, lost money there. So I'd say that those are the two types that need something, um, you know, like crowded. Um, but then you do have very large established nonprofits who have the resources to set up a donor management system with an online payment processor. Um, and they can probably afford to mix and match. Um, uh, but I think if you're a small nonprofit, you just want to put the headache with someone else. Yeah. One yeah. of the things I think, Daniel, is a lot of nonprofits think wherever the money is, we want it to be yeah. accessible, right? If someone wants to give us PayPal, we'll take it. If someone wants to do Apple Pay, we'll take it. Venmo, we'll take it. Cash, we'll take it. Credit card, like all of these avenues, it's like, We'll take anything, however you want to give it to us. But what I'm hearing is really becoming streamlined. Are you seeing on that flip side, Daniel, where nonprofits are like, I don't know, like the, because we're not doing Venmo or any other, you know, financial platform, we're losing donations or other revenue. So you need, you don't have to give up on your payment methods, but you need to have a place to centralize them and to um, record all that data. So with a system like ours, you can deposit cash in an ATM and then it comes in as a neat transaction line. You can record that as cash. You can collect on Venmo if you wish, push it into the crowded account um, and you know record that as, as proper income for the nonprofit. Um, you'd have to create a, a Venmo for business account, which would cost you money, but you could do it if you wanted. Um, if you felt that there opportunity was great enough which sometimes it is sometimes you know donors are very specific about the way they want to give money and that's fine and you do want to you know give as many options as possible but just that centralization is super important so i think that like if you're going to go on the multi-method payment method route um i definitely understand it because you want to maximize donor convenience but just make sure you have a place to centralize it so that you're remaining compliant you know, Daniel, do you see, uh, and thank you for that, because I think that puts it into perspective of how we manage and operate, uh, you know, our, our nonprofits, but do you see this as um, a certain type of behavior for a certain part of the nonprofit sector, meaning is, is it for things that are more event-based or, you know, a, a demographic or an age, is there any kind of direction that you see this moving in? Well, 50% of Venmo users are under the age of 34. So it it, it will not surprise you that we see this a lot in, you know, younger um, demographics. Um, You know, even like we can even see it in like PTAs for like, you know, elementary school. It's more common than PTAs in high schools and stuff like that because it's just a demographic divide. Um, So that's definitely one is, 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 you know, just, you know, age, um, it, it is more common with the, the younger folk, but also then even if you're, you know, not, even if you're older than that, but you are dealing with younger donors, um, you know, they want to donate via Venmo. So it's creeping up to everyone, um, but it is it is still more common in the, you know, younger demographics. And the other thing I would add in terms of the types of things, it is much, um, much more common in sort of, ad hoc uh, fundraising environments. So uh, things sure. like, oh, I'm selling Girl Scout cookies, I'm having a bake sale, I'm a, rather than like a, a, you know, a giving day at a university or a college, which is very organized and, and very streamlined and has a lot of resources. So those are probably the two sectors where you'll see it the most. I'm thinking raffle sales, like any time we've really 
we're kind of canvassing, if you will, different areas, um, something like that. This has just been phenomenal. Fascinating. Fascinating. Yep. I, for me, it, these are conversations that I don't often think about and just go about my day, go about my business, go about whatever, but really understanding the risks, the implications, the solutions that provided, you know, to our sector. We say this all the time, and I'm sure our loyal viewers and <laughs> listeners are tired. 1.8 million registered nonprofits in the U.S., right? 1.8 million. Yeah. That's a lot. And we all have a lot of I's to dot and T's to cross. So Daniel Grunstein, thank you for bringing um, your valuable expertise in this space to today's conversation. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Julia. Thanks for having me. It's been really interesting. And um, cookie sales are going to ramp up um, <laughs> pretty soon. And I do know that uh, the Girl Scouts have created a new platform where each girl has her own uh, web sheet or web page or landing page that allows sales to track through because of digital payments, um, probably demanded by the parents that are out there with their kids trying to sell cookies, you know. So yeah. very interesting. I mean, I remember walking the neighborhood knocking on doors with a big manila envelope, right? Yep. Where you open up the big, yep. it looks like a centerfold of a, of a, of a calendar, yep. you open it up, you check the little box, right? You hope you can read their handwriting. Mm -hmm. And then, then you had to make change. Or you had to go collect it. You had to put in, yeah, it was a mess. It was a mess. We would have, we would have sold a lot more back in the day um, than, than we, uh, you know, have. Well, this has been amazing and really a great conversation here again on The Nonprofit Show. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, my nonprofit nerd personally, and she can be yours as well. That's right, sister, push up those glasses. Um, Jarrett Ransom, CEO of The Raven Group. Again, we have tremendous partners. Most of these folks who've been with us when we started three years ago, um, at the onset of the pandemic, we're now moving into our fourth year and we will be reaching that 1000th episode in the first week or so of March. And our amazing partners include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, York Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Again, amazing partners that help not only the nonprofit show, but our sector as well. And so we invite you to learn more about what they're doing. Jarrett, before we came on air today, you said that one of our big, uh, in one of our very first partners, Bloomerang has made a huge announcement today. And so we're going to have to delve into that when they're on um, in next week. Yeah, it's really fun to see how our sector is changing. And I want to say collaborating. It's it's yeah. really cool. So there's a lot of good things happening. Daniel, thank you again for joining us um, from Crowded. I love what you're up to. We need more of this um, and more conversation. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, everybody, every day, each and every day, we leave you with this mantra of ours, and it means so many different things every time we say it, and it goes like this, to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you.